Testimony, the testimony is you're here. You made it again. You made it into the house of the Lord. God has something for somebody. Just, just lift your hands right where you are. Let's go in a quick word of prayer and, and, and get into the word of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I lift up your people to you right now. Concerning every burden, concerning every circumstance and obstacle that they're dealing with, in Jesus' name, we give it totally into your hands. We take the weight off of their shoulders, in Jesus' name, and we put it on to you. We thank you, Lord God, that your word shall fall on good ground, that it shall prosper in the lives of your people. 100-fold, in Jesus' name, we glorify you and everyone who believed God said amen. 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 Let's go very quickly in, into the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter of the book of Jer Jeremiah. And um, we're going to deal with some things. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. Let's start at verse 5. And then we'll see what the Lord does. The Lord has been stirring my spirit uh, about trusting him. Amen. Sometimes we get to the point to where there is nothing else that we can do but trust him. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah 17, beginning at verse 5. The word of God reads like this. Thus says the Lord. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord, is what he should be like. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places of the, in the wilderness, in a salt land which is, in, is not inhabited, but watch the blessing for the man that trusts in the Lord. Verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Here's what he shall be like. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters yes. which oh, yes. spreads out its root by the river yes, Lord. and will not fear when he comes, mm -hmm. but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease from yielding fruit. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Uh, the word cursed uh, means the empowerment to fail. The word blessing means the empowerment to prosper. Amen. So there are two kinds of powers. There, are, there, there is an endowment of power that makes you fail, and there's an endowment of power that makes you prosper. Uh, what, what, what we have control over is based on what power we receive, what anointing we receive, whether we receive the power to mess up or whether we receive the power to prosper, whether we receive the curse or whether we receive the blessing. The Bible tells us very clearly that cursed is the man who trusts in man and who makes flesh his strength. Another thing that he mentions is that whose heart departs from the Lord. So if we begin to trust in man, what begins to happen to us is we become cursed. We become empowered to fail, empowered to mess up, empowered not to make it, empowered for the storm to overcome us instead of for us to overcome the storm. Empowered for the trial to overcome us instead of for us to overcome the trial. Empowered for the test to beat us in order in, in, instead of us beating the test. So we have to be careful not to trust in people. 
Sometimes we depend on all kinds of other sources other than God. We, we depend on the government sometimes. We depend on our brothers. We depend on our sisters. We depend on our friends. We depend on everybody sometimes but, but, but God. And, and when we do that, we become cursed and our hearts depart from the Lord. The Bible tells us that our strength becomes flesh when we trust in man. The thing about when our strength becomes flesh is flesh will fail you. Just earlier we was talking about how man at times will let you down. They will fail. They will mess up. People will not always be there for you like they say they will because they're human and they make mistakes. It is not always that everybody's intention is bad or that everybody's intention is to see you fall or to not be there for you. But 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 it comes a time in our lives just as human beings where we don't have every I dotted and every T crossed, where, where we don't always have it together. We don't always do everything that we say. We don't always do everything perfect. We don't always do the right thing that we that we don't always keep our words all the time sometimes we be, we miss the mark at times so it's important not to put your trust in man because then your strength becomes man Whatever your trust is in becomes your strength. If your trust is in money, money becomes your strength. If your trust is people, then people become your strength. If your trust is a new car or a new house, then a new car or a new house becomes your strength. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You've got to be careful about what you put your trust in. See, God wants us to walk by faith. He wants us to live by trusting him. He wants us to depend on on him. The Lord had showed me some time ago that faith is something that, that, that you cannot just walk by, but there has to be a situation that makes your faith work. Oh, yeah. It's impossible for you to walk by faith in a sight situation. It's easy to say that you're walking by faith when you got all your connections right in front of you, and when you got everybody who you're going to call right in front of you, when you got all your resources and everything mapped out and you understand exactly how you're going to make ends meet it's easy for you to walk by faith in a sight situation but but faith is not faith until it becomes the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen you've got to get into a situation to where you are out of options in order to walk by faith there is no reason for you to need to trust God unless you're in a situation where you have run out of ideas unless you're in a situation where you have tried everything that you know and everything that you know has not navigated you through. It has not been enough to get you to where you belong. It has not been enough to get you your desired result. You have got to get into a position to where every resource is cut off and the only option that you have is God. I'm sensing in my spirit right now that there are some of you in a place right now in your life in some area that the only way that thing is going to ever change or turn around for the good is God is your only option. God is the only way. God is the only one who can turn that thing around for you to work it out for your good. Look at somebody and tell them trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Trust, trust God. We're, we're at a point now where we have to trust God. It is the only option. There is no other way to make ends meet. There is no other way to navigate through this thing. Everybody that you have been believing God to deliver and been praying for and been preaching to and been talking to and been calling on the phone and been trying to tell the truth to but have been seeing them get worse you're at a place in your life right now where the only one that can help you is God and you have got to learn how to trust the Lord look at somebody and tell them trust God, trust God. he says blessed is the man who trust in the Lord. In other words, empowered to prosper, empowered to make it through this circumstance is the one who trusts in the Lord. See, oftentimes what we do is we complain when we get in trouble. We complain when we run out of options and we say, Lord, I have prayed and I have, I have studied, I have stood on your word, I have fasted, I have done everything that I know to do. What happened here? How 